Today we're joined by Steve Hunter of the Blue Jays Fan UK as we get the Toronto Blue Jay perspective from fans that follow the team from across the pond. You are Locked On Blue Jays, your daily Toronto Blue Jays podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, friends. Craig Ballard, Locked On Blue Jays. That's an accurate way to describe me. I've been locked on the Toronto Blue Jays ever since I can remember. Blue Jays baseball, a big deal for me. It's a big deal for my family, so I certainly thank you and appreciate that you're spending part of your day talking Toronto Blue Jay baseball with me. Locked on Blue Jays, of course, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. And if you're checking out today's episode on the Locked on Blue Jay YouTube page, I want to say hello. Thank you for checking this out. Please hit that subscribe. And to the everydayers making the Locked on Blue Jay podcast your first podcast listen every day. Hello to you as well. Thank you to you as well. Please hit that five-star rating. Recently caught up with Steve Hunter from the Red, White, and Blue Jays podcast, who is a massive and knowledgeable Blue Jays fan from the UK. Shout out to the fellow Blue Jay uh, fans out there from the UK and, and, and from across the pond overseas, right? I mean, your commitment and the way you arrange things, considering the time difference and things like that, to follow your passion for Blue Jays baseball, it's really impressive to me. And Steve and I talk about that and a whole lot more. So let's get into it. Craig Ballard, Locked On Blue Jays, very pleased to be joined with somebody I'm going to say right out the gate is a special guest. You can see the Twitter handle on the bottom there. So if you don't already know Steve Hunter and his Blue Jays fans UK uh, work, his podcast, what, what he does on social media. And yes, the UK definitely stands for United Kingdom. We're going to get into all of that here. And here's Steve is somebody that when you're like me. And the normal 7.05 p.m. Eastern is an 8.05 p.m. Eastern start time for the Blue Jays because they're in Chicago or in the Midwest, you know, and it's that one hour difference. And, and we're all upset and, 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 and sour about that. Steve doesn't want to hear it. Steve doesn't want to hear it because he is in the UK. So, Steve, first of all, welcome to the Locked On Blue Jay podcast. Would, would love your introduction. Would love to hear about, you know, how did you become a Blue Jay fan? And, and what's that like in the UK, Steve? And I'm literally talking about... So a 7.05 p.m. Eastern game for us here in Canada. You have to stay up till what time to watch that? Give, give us that whole picture, Steve. Okay, Craig, thank you so much. Uh, really cool to be with you. Uh, so excited about it. talking about Blue Jays baseball again. It's yes. always fun connecting with people, particularly from your side of the world. And uh, we've known each other a little while now, and uh, you were very gracious to come on my podcast. So um, I'm absolutely thrilled to be able to talk to you again. Yeah, um, well, my story, let, let's start there. Started back in 1994. Um, so I was uh, on vacation with some friends of mine who lived in Hamilton at the time. Wow. And uh, so middle of the summer of 94, uh, it was my, I was in my early 20s. And my birthday was uh, in the period of time that I was actually in Canada. And they knew that I love sport. And, you know, growing up here, obviously, all the traditional British sports like soccer, or football, as we call it, uh, you know, cricket, all those sort of things. Used to love all that. And they said, oh, look, we'd love to take you to a Blue Jays game. And I knew a little bit about baseball. You know, I wasn't a complete novice, but baseball in the UK at that particular point in time really had zero coverage. There's nothing on TV. Sure. Um, so it was only snippets that I'd managed to, to, to gain. And, of course, in 94, after the two seasons of the World Series, yeah. <laughs> you know, the, the ballpark was still pumping, lots of excitement. And I I, I went on the 8th of August, 1994, and uh, it was only four days after I got to see my first game that the strike of 94 kicked in. Wow. So, so literally by my fingernails did I <laughs> get exposed to this amazing game. And uh, quite frankly, I fell in love with Canada. I fell in love with the Jays. And I couldn't do enough to try and find out a bit more about them and uh you know get some sort of game updates obviously the strike happened in 94 when it kicked back in 95 i tried to pick up the you know the, the storyline again but over here the coverage was so poor mm. uh the only way that i could get updates and because we forget this is all pre-internet this is yeah. you know before any of this sort of stuff no tv coverage the only way i could find uh, the storylines of what the Jays were doing was to go into my local news agent on a Saturday where they had an international version of USA Today. So it used to only get printed once a week. And so wow. I would make, make my way down, buy my USA Today, and I would just read a bit about, not just about the Jays, but just about baseball in general, other teams, and start to really, you know, 
get that enthusiasm for the game and and following it. Uh, I managed to get hold of Baseball Digest, uh, so mm. subscribed to that for a, for for a little while. And then in the late 90s, uh, one of our TV stations over here called Channel 5, they started broadcasting a, a live game on Sunday evenings. So that for us, typical midnight through to about 4 a.m. slot. So evening game, East Coast time. Um, they used to put, put that out uh, once a week on a Sunday. And again, it could be any two teams across the, yep. the whole of the uh, MLB. But it was at least baseball, and it was baseball that we could watch. And so we, you know, put the old VCR in and wow. record record the game, and we'd watch it back. And uh, yeah, just I started to, you know, uh, my wife loves sport as well, so we started watching the games together from from Channel Five, and really just from there on in, it it got more and more momentum here. And then of course, as the internet kicked in, you know, we would be able to catch up with things, and then MLB TV really was the game changer for, for people like me. Uh, we're sure. able to watch watch our team every game live. We have no blackouts in this country, so that's brilliant. Uh, so literally every, <laughs> game, every game is shown. The only thing that we have to negotiate is the time difference. Yeah. So, and, and too funny is you get into a rhythm with it. Mm -hmm. So midnight games, uh, so eight, seven o'clock games, uh, your time. Um, I can totally power through. So I keep going, keep going, watch the game and, you know, then hit the sack after the game's finished. If it's a West Coast game, I'll try and get a few Ooh. hours in beforehand. Uh, they normally start around the 2, 2 oh, 3 a.m. start. Uh, so we then, you know, get a bit of few, few hours sleep, watch the game, get a few more hours sleep and then get up. So, but uh, to be fair, as as I'm getting older, uh, my my staying power is not quite as strong as it used to be. <laughs> I have to put that out there. But it, yeah, it's it's a joy to watch, uh, Craig. You know, love it and can't get enough of it. And yeah, we ju we just get used to it. It's just oh our, our world, our world. That is, I mean, I was hanging on every word, Steve. I thought that was so fascinating there. So yeah, that, that's describing fandom. I had no idea this day and age. Even even a, a young child who's a Blue Jay fan, and, you know, doesn't have the stamina to stay up or the bedtime to stay up and watch the game. First thing in the morning when they wake up, they know what's happened here. You're describing catching up a week at a time. Holy mo! That's I, I never knew that. You just blew my mind on that. And Steve, I had no idea. I'm sick to my stomach here. I had no idea your fandom started in 94. My gosh, you were good news that, yes, fine, you got in before the strike. But as you already know, Steve, my gosh, you just missed the glory days in 92 and 93. Holy moly. Wow. So what's up? So, so a 1 p.m. Eastern game is a beautiful time. That's dinner time for you. That's a beautiful scenario. Yes. Yeah, we love yeah. love weekend games. Uh, and typically the Jays. Uh, well, historically, played a lot of games at one o'clock. They've yeah. shifted a few now to yeah. sort of four four p.m. starts. Uh, but yeah, anything that is, I, I would say, anything that starts before ten p.m. here is at what we call a UK friendly time. Okay, you know, so awesome. so yeah, certainly the one p.m. starts that you know the three p.m. four p.m. starts they're all very doable. Uh, you know, it's great to watch the Tiger series over the weekend, and uh, mm. yeah, and I'd be able to watch you know two of those three games live. Um, so yeah, we, we just, we get sort of used to it. Uh, then if you have a whole run of games, which are, and, and, and some of the, you know, the West coast games that even their, their day games are late starters. Yeah. So, uh, you can find, you can go a long period of time without, um, actually, you know, unless you're staying up into the wee hours watching the game live. I mean, one of the things for me, uh, in a bit of my daily commute for work and stuff, I'll catch up on, you know, Blue Jays talk and stuff in terms of just at least being able to hear a little bit about what happened to the game. So I'm not yep. completely disconnected from reality for, for a whole week, but, sure. yeah, geez. <laughs> but, but you have to, you have to work it. You have to work a little bit harder wow. perhaps than, than people like yourself. Well, that's such a fan. Oh, you're, uh, I'm so impressed by it now, Steve. So approximately what time would the bat flip have been? Uh, yeah. So the bat flip, uh, I would, from what I can remember was about two thirty three AM in the morning. And, I was watching that game that night with my eldest daughter. Um, uh, she she was in her mid-teens at the time. Everybody else had, you know, hit the sack for the night. And uh, so we are, you know, I, I mean, that's that's seventh inning, as, as you've probably covered a, a, a numerous amount of times. But that seventh inning for me, 
remembering you know how it outplayed and just, think, just thinking poor old russell martin and what happened and, and 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 i just remember pacing around our living room uh it's just that we cannot lose on that moment that cannot be the defining moment because there was so much excitement in the ballpark that night um yeah. and then obviously as as the you know the bottom of the seventh started to unfold and the errors from the ranges started to unfold and it's just like oh my goodness oh my goodness and who's coming up uh so yeah it's just an extraordinary moment and i just remember jumping up and down you know trying not to shout too loudly so i didn't wake everybody up yeah. but oh my goodness uh and one of the things you know for us watching on tv uh is obviously we 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 only get to experience largely the television perspective and all i can remember is just seeing these cameras shaking right you know and, and with the noise and the you know the jubilation in the ballpark and and the cameras on on you know the stands and stuff and you could just feel it from the tv screen in terms of what was going on there and i've spoken to oh loads of people who were in the ballpark that night to get their perspective on what it was like to actually be there and did anybody actually really see the bat flip because everybody's watching the ball including good myself point. good you point know? yeah um so you know beyond the couple of camera guys who actually just kept the the cameras on jose i think everybody else was looking in an opposite direction but yeah it was a, just an amazing moment uh, and i think it was probably i still i still think i put it down to probably my top sporting moment of wow. all the different sports i've watched over the years and there's been some really great excitement i'm in a i'm a big liverpool football fan as well and we've had some great moments in the champions league and, and so on but i think i can't remember another moment in sport that had such the backdrop of drama of that seventh inning yes and that moment of uh, you know jose knocking it out and just yeah what a, what a, what it. an evening what a day you know what I really enjoyed, Steve? I uh, had uh, Tim Leeper on the Locked On Blue Jay podcast a couple of weeks back. So he was the first base coach at the time. And you talk about perspective. My yeah. God. And you know what's so funny? You reminded me of it, Steve, when you said, oh, my gosh, look what just happened. That fluke play with Russell Martin. Now they've taken – this is how we're – like, are you kidding me right now? That's how I was feeling as well. And I ran that by Tim Leeper, and it was really interesting to hear his insight. There was zero panic in the dugout. In fact, they were practically laughing at it. They were all in the dugout. They're all just saying, well, <laughs> zero chance. That's how we lose this game. Zero. Yeah. Whereas fans like us, we're sitting there. You were almost looking like me, Steve, wondering, oh, my <laughs> God, that's how we lose this. Are you kidding me right now? That's how we get eliminated from these, you know what, Texas Rangers? Oh, my gosh. But in the dugout, they were totally calm, cool, and collected. And I love when you're talking about the air, Steve, I love when Tim Leeper was talking about there was air, uh, I believe it was Mitch Moreland, the first baseman, made one of those errors. And of course, Tim Leeper's right there to see the flip. And, and Tim Leeper's describing as he can see, it's almost in slow motion, right? You know, it's amazing how, how the mind works, that as, as the first baseman comes up with the ball in his bare hand as he's about to throw it, Tim Leeper can see the ball moving in his hand. He can see he's barely got it by, like he saw that air coming a mile away. So I just love that perspective. And of course, your perspective across the pond, Steve, I, I, I'm, I'm very impressed how it's, uh, you know, that that's a huge shout out for the bat flip that it's the most impressive sporting moment you've ever seen. I, I absolutely love that. Coming up on the Locked On Blue Jay podcast with Blue Jays Fan UK, we're going to get into the London series. And what do Blue Jays fans across the pond think about the Shapiro and Atkins regime? But first, I wanted to talk about my new favorite shorts, bird dogs. Thank goodness it's shorts weather, right? Certainly my favorite time of the year. <laughs> Now, bird dog stress, stretchy khaki shorts, they're designed to fit slimmer through the thigh in the leg, giving you a sculpted look. They fit way better than the regular shorts that are made of that stiff, restricting cotton. Now, bird dogs has fixed that particular issue by inventing cloud neck fabric. It looks just like khaki, but stretches so you get a way slimmer fit without having to sacrifice the movement. Bird dog uses anti-stink sweat wicking fabric that keeps you cool and dry all day long. Go to birddogs.com slash locked on MLB. Enter the promo code locked on MLB for a free Yeti style tumbler with your order. That's birddogs.com slash locked on MLB. Promo code locked on MLB for the free Yeti style tumbler. You won't want to take your bird dogs off. I mean, I love the London series that we've just had. Mm -hmm. managed, managed to take eight people up with me and some first time baseball fans. Uh, you've never been ah. to see a game before and uh, really enjoyed the day. Yeah, it was great. Great fun. And, and we can segue because I want to ask you about the London series. It, it was uh, this year it was Chicago and St. Louis. Um, yeah, I mean you see a lot of Cubs fans, a lot of St. Louis fans, sure. But who are some of the other fan bases there? See, like just just and from your from your mind's eye that you're seeing a, a lot of other fan bases represented that you're sitting there saying, you know who next year's London series needs to be? This team versus this team. There's fans everywhere of these teams. Was there anything yeah. like that going on? 
Oh, definitely. Um, I mean, the, the one the one thing because it's a minority sport is that I've not only connected to a lot of Jays fans across you know the UK and in Canada, but also I've connected with a lot of baseball fans per se who support all the different major league sure. teams. And one one of the things that we have all worked hard to do is to try and create a community feel in terms of, yeah, we love this sport together. Let's let's promote it. Let's you know support each other in whatever you're doing so there are regular meetups that um the mlb uk oh, wow. community do so we'll, we'll we'll go and hire a bar somewhere we'll get the baseball put on and te- you know fans from different teams will just cut the, gather together because they love to talk about baseball and and certainly going to the london series in fact there, there you are i have the london series oh, brilliant uh, beautiful program for the game two weeks ago uh yeah they they were teams represented right across major league. I think like me, I went in my Jays gear and, you know, virtually every team I think I saw at some point during my sort of wander around the ballpark. And and, and, yeah, so it's a real celebration of baseball. It's very different to watching a game, you know, over in the States or, or, or in Toronto where you have really just the two teams represented at the London series. Yes, there was a, a majority of, of Cardinal fans and Cubs fans. But beyond that, there was a massive mix of other teams represented. And I think both this last series that we've just had and the one back in 2019 when the Yankees and the Red Sox came, the general opinion, and I'm not, not being biased here, this is what many people have said to me, the general opinion is that the Jays were the most next represented team. Okay. Yeah, I love at that. The games. And, I, and I think there is such a close connection between the UK and Canada. Um, there's a lot Good of Cana- a lot of Canadians who live here. There's also a lot of us like me who've come on vacation to Canada, fallen in love with the place. And so so the Jays are are really, really well represented. And so all of Ooh. us are like, come on, come on, Mark, you can do this. And Mark Shaparo has hinted, and it's not much more than that, but he has hinted. Uh, it was about three months ago. He said something along the lines of, and I'm paraphrasing here, something along the lines of, it would make sense for the Jays to consider doing that series because of the close connection between the two countries. Something along those lines, which was the nearest we've had thus yeah. far to them saying yes. We know it's not going to be next year because they've already announced that it's the Mets and the Phillies mm-hmm. that are coming across in 2024. Then the uh, series goes across to Paris for a year. Um, so they're going to take the game across to Paris and then it comes back to the UK in 2026. I'd love it if they came to the UK, but if they go to Paris, you know, we will take a little trip across the channel and we will, you know, go and see them play in, in Paris if that's what it means. But I, I'm hoping that, you know, common sense prevails and, and that they look to bring the Jays over here in 2026. Well, I'm just thinking out loud here, Steve, 2026, the Vegas A's will be looking for some sort of spark. Yeah. So Vegas A's, Toronto Blue Jays, 2026. Feels like, yeah. it, from what you just yeah. said, Steve, feels like it writes itself. I love that. I absolutely love that. Now, you, you mentioned Mark Shapiro. I did want to get your take. Uh, the, you're bringing such unique uh, point of view here. I think that, that that's, I'm fascinated about that whole idea. So here in, in, in Toronto, like let's say if the Yankees did well, I'd be livid. My people in my circle would be livid. You're saying across the pond, you wouldn't be happy, but you're going to know a Yankee fan and it's a baseball community. So you actually are going to be happy. Like that's very different. I, I, I actually like that a lot. But when you talk about, uh, Chicago, uh, don't, yeah? don't get me wrong. I uh, don't get me wrong. You know, we don't like the Yankees at all. Right. Uh, so, so when they came across in 2019, I think, uh, yeah, uh, it was a difficult one to, because obviously watching the Red Sox Yankees, you didn't really want either of them to win. Yes, but, exactly correct. So I had to sort of put that aside and think, actually, I'm <laughs> celebrating watching live Major League Baseball in a soccer stadium, because that's what they yeah. used. So if you know the, if you remember back to the 2020, sorry, 2012 London Olympics, uh, that's the stadium that they're using for for the major league games awesome. uh, it's an amazing job that they've done in co- in converting it over because the, the the basic shape is oval so you get lots of space around the foul lines and so they have brought all the seats in just to try and close that space down but yeah so w- watching the yankees red Sox, i wasn't cheering for either side but i was just celebrating the fact that I it was baseball watch- yeah, it yeah, yeah. It was baseball. Exactly right. Exactly, exactly. right. Yes, yeah, exactly right. <laughs> now, I'd love to get the the UK fan perspective here 
on Shapiro and Atkins. I mean, for me, it's it's the first time in franchise history that a, that a sustainable contender has been built. Uh, but it, it's certainly true to say that it's also the first time in baseball history where maybe it's easier to build a sustainable contender. When, when you and I grew up, Steve, I mean, you won the division, even in 94, you won the division. <laughs> Or, or you went home. There was no first wild card, second wild card. Now we have a third wild card. There was nothing like that. So I, I get that. I guess it's easier to build a sustainable mm-hmm. contender in this day and age. But still, not every team has done it. Shapiro and Atkins, I, I do believe, have done it. A lot of, uh, I mean, here in Toronto, here in Canada, there are some uh, fans of Shapiro and Atkins. But I might have to use that loosely. I feel like there's a lot of detractors of Shapiro and Atkins. What about over in the UK? How do you guys feel about the regime? Uh, well, I think I think there's such um, love for Alex and all that he did. Yeah, good point. For uh, Shaparo and, and and Atkins came in, and you know, and to see what he's gone on to do as well, mm. uh, I, I think you know, you you can sort of take a step back and think if only that had if that relationship had only worked out and and it, it seemed fairly quickly that it wasn't going to work out for yes. whatever reason. So I don't want to surmise on what happened, but. Alex felt obviously he he moved on. I think I think I think with Shapiro and Atkins, I I, I thought well we've got to give him chance. You know it, the proof will be in the pudding whether this is going to work. And I think a lot of what Mark Shapiro says does seem to make sense. Um, but there is a tipping point where I think that you know you have to start asking is this going to work? Mm. And I think the 2023 Blue Jays haven't been the 2023 blue jays that i think anybody was expecting and this whole this whole sort of mental picture that that, that they've pushed in terms of we've got a window really from sort of 21 through to whatever 24 25 with this group of players where we should be expecting something big and great to happen and my concern is and i think you know, they've done some really great things. Obviously, the, the Renaults at the, the Rogers Centre this year yep. seem to have gone down really well. Some real positive stuff there. They're going to do another, obviously, uh, load of work in the off-season this year. So th- there's part of it that I feel that they have done a really, really good job. And then there's other bits that just don't quite seem to make sense. Hmm. And and I think the Toronto fan base, whether you are from Toronto or whether you are from somewhere like me over here, there's a point where that that pendulum swings over from okay well we've given you every opportunity now to to make your mark and to your your regime and your your game plan to work out and it's not quite working um and i know that you know they took that they're very intelligent guys they speak intelligently when you listen to them and you know say the right things but the reality is i think our 2023 blue jays while they're still very much in contention it just feels like they're, they're not because of the season we've had. And I think some of the trades and so on, I, you know, seeing Marino go for the Varsho trade, I'm still not sure about that one. I think he was such a prospect and, and mm-hmm. you know, there isn't much coming down the pipeline. Uh, perhaps Tiedemann's the only one really that we can put a name on in terms of what's happening uh, below the, 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 you know, the, the starting roster. Uh, so I, I, you know, I think for us is just like everybody else, uh, you know, there's probably some question marks there, but I want to give them the benefit of the doubt yeah. to see this full game plan go through. And if they get through and it doesn't happen, well, they've had a go and perhaps it's time for a change. I'm pretty, I'm on a lot of the same pages there. The, as much as I'll, I'll praise them for the, for the sustainable contender, if, if the Bo and Vlad era in Toronto comes and goes and there's not a world series championship, there'd just be, there'll be no spin I'm able to put on it or, 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 or that I'll be willing to listen to. That will be a failure. Yeah. I don't think there's any doubt about that. Coming up on the Lockdown Blue Jay podcast, Steve shows us his awesome Toronto Blue Jay bobblehead collection. It is vast. It is impressive. But first, I wanted to mention that this show is sponsored by BetterHelp. Now, sometimes in life, we're faced with tough choices, and the path forward isn't always clear. Whether you're dealing with decisions around career, relationships, I mean, you name it, therapy helps you stay connected to what is really important as you navigate life so you can move forward with confidence and excitement. Trusting yourself to make decisions that align with your values, it's like anything else, right? The more you practice it, the easier it gets. Well, therapy can help you with learning positive coping skills, how to set boundaries. It empowers you to be the best version of yourself, and it isn't just for those who've experienced major trauma. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online. It's designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. 
You just fill out a brief questionnaire and you get matched with a licensed therapist and you can switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. Let therapy be your map with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash LockedOnMLB today. You'll get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash LockedOnMLB. Steve, we'll, we'll get you out of here in a moment here, but I, I, you, you alluded to it earlier. I mean, I'd just be remiss. I'm blown away. I, I've got the uh, Romano and Jansen bobblehead, and, and that's the end of where I'm going to be able to compete with you on the bobbleheads. Steve, <laughs> give, give, uh, give us a tour, because that looks absolutely okay. epic. Uh, yeah, so, um, okay, so down, down the bottom here, I've got uh, Jerry and Lourdes and Gosman and Edwin at the back, Springer at the back, Tioscar in the middle here. Oh, my God. The Romano Jansen one here at the front, the, the Bowflows in the middle, oh. uh, Vladdy and then Hazel. So that's the bottom row. At the top, I've got on the front, uh, Joe Carter, uh, Aaron Sanchez, Strowman, Bautista, Dickey, Estrada, Brett, Brett Laurie, Russell Martin. Uh, at the back, i Oh, my got gosh. Stoke. Uh, and Tulo and Pilar and Donaldson and Mark Burley. So that that's my oh and and the uh, the Blue Jay Zombie. He's in there as well. Where do I even start? Did you say Jerry Steve? Is that a Jerry Howarth bobblehead? A Jerry Howarth. Yeah. Are you kidding me? Here we go. Oh my gosh! Absolutely, ep Steve. I start every single uh, episode with uh, "Hello, friends," and that's, hello, friends. That's yeah. my tribute to Jerry Howard. That's how we started every single broadcast. You're blowing he's, my mind on that. And Scott, an uh, sorry, Steve. Most of those, Steve, as you were saying earlier, that's from the kindness of Blue Jay fans. Yes, that's how you accumulated most of those. Yes, yeah, most of those. Um, so, so some I have purchased, but um, a lot of those have been people that have reached out to me on social media uh, or friends who've been here in the UK have gone on a vacation, happened to be there when there was a game day giveaway. Uh, so yeah, it's been, you know, it's been a little while I've been collecting them. So it's, it's taken a, you know, a few years to, to pick up, but um, well, sure. Yeah. Ari Dickey in there for crying out loud. He hasn't been in, yeah. in the league and for like, yeah, you had, you had exactly. some older guys there. Well, Joe, Joe Carter. Yeah. There you go. I, I, I remember Joe Carter. Cause if I go back to 94, Everything I was being told about the Blue Jays and, and my introduction to the Jays was to hear about Joe Carter's home run, of course, in the 93 World Series. Yeah. And so he, f you know, became my fa favorite from the day one. Uh, and I was so excited to go and see him play on that day. Uh, so, yeah, I definitely had to have a Joe Carter. So that that's uh, that was actually given to me. Uh, so one of my guests that I have when we do our live pods over here, uh, he knew a little bit of my story and he managed to obtain that joe carter for me Brilliant. which is very very kind of him so yeah being really really blessed absolutely love it steve we'll we'll, we'll, uh, well thank you for your time we'll let you go here but tell the let the good people know we, we, we can see your twitter your twitter handle there now that's a podcast as well that you that, that you'll do i know this season you, you know you're, you're you're trying to spend more time with family and that so maybe not as active this season but still some really good uh, interviews yeah. up there as well uh, arash uh, shy davidi i've seen on there um uh who is the was i trying to remember earlier that was just on um yeah ben, we had ben, uh, wagner, ben, ben on. wagner i mean holy yeah cow, he, he did a great uh opening uh thoughts for the season so I had him most recently but yeah i've had uh, gibby on um i've had ricky romero wow. um chris colabello has been on uh so yeah a lot lot of jay's guys so really excited so yeah no, please have a look at them so definitely give steve a follow a blue jays fan uk you 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 see it there steve what an absolute blast thank you for your time and, and i hope we'll get, we'll get a chance to do this again soon and i hope we'll get a chance to do this again soon when we're sitting there saying oh my gosh do you believe the jays have caught tampa i mean are we loving life or what <laughs> <laughs> that would be amazing if yeah. that happened uh but craig yeah no really appreciate your time um i uh, you know as i said at the beginning it's known you for a while and it's always a joy to speak to you and just really appreciate your support of, of what I've done over here and uh, what we're collectively is doing, Jays fans. So, yep. I, you know, the whole reason I started the Blue Jays Fans UK was a means to connect fans together. It was about recognizing there was less of us here in the UK, um, but we just wanted to find a common place that everybody could feel at home. Love and we, we, we've managed to do that. And it's gone far beyond what I ever anticipated it would do. So, yeah, obviously the Twitter account, we've got an Instagram account with the same title. Um, the YouTube channel is under the same title. Uh, the actual podcast itself is called Red, White and Blue Jays, just picking up on our flag color yeah, nice. colors, but, but you can find it at Blue Jays Fans UK. We also have a Facebook group. So, yeah, it's in lots of places and it's been an absolute joy to 
to connect people together and to, to share stories of our love of the Blue Jays. It's helping the fan base grow, and I'm so impressed, Steve. I really thank you for your time. We'll, we'll, we'll get together again soon, sir. I'd love that. I'd love okay. that. Thanks ever so much. That's a wrap for Wednesday's episode. More with Steve Hunter, Blue Jays fan UK, later this week. I mean, do you, do you believe the things that they have to arrange uh, uh, to follow the Blue Jays across the pond there? Like every bit as passionate as as we are here in Canada for Toronto Blue Jay baseball and building such an awesome community of Blue Jay fans in, in a different continent, right? So I just think the whole thing is awesome. Reminder that the All Blue Jay games this season are on Sirius XM and keep it locked on the Locked On Podcast Network and check out Sully hosting Locked On MLB. Have a great Wednesday, and we'll talk tomorrow.